And thank you for joining us again for Cigar Time. Yes. Your friendly Tuesday night show all about premium cigars. Are you How's sure it's that? friendly? Is that good? <laughs> not on this crew. No, good cigars. not at all. We are very pleased and happy and, and blessed because it's almost like a religious experience to have Tim Person, a very big shot with out of this, uh, the makers of uh, a number of iconic, iconic brands that uh, include Romeo y Julieta, Monte Cristo, H. Upman, Don Diego, uh, missing a few. Juan Lopez. Ray. Juan Lopez. Sally Ray. Sally Ray. 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 Thank you. Vega Fina. Vega Fina. Yeah. Vega Fina. One of the most popular cigars in Monte the entire Cristo. world. Did I said Monte Cristo. It's Monte Cristo. Crisco. We weren't listening. I know. <laughs> Why should this be any different? <laughs> And uh, today we're going to be smoking the Romeo by Romeo. And the lovely Miss T is going to tell us all about it as we light our cigars. Gentlemen and ladies, light up. Gentlemen, light up. I'm going to tell you about the cigars. So the wrapper is an Ecuadorian Habano. The binder is Dominican and the filler is Dominican. There are four sizes, Churchill, Pyramid, Robusto, and Toro. And the flavor profile is cocoa, earthy, and nutty. That's it. That's it. That's all you got to say. All I have to say. Yeah. See, it's done. I'm done. You know something? It, I just figured something out. Which none of you caught on. And it's astute observation that I come to the conclusion I know why Tia is always last on the initial observations. Because as we're lighting and taking our first inhale, Tia is still rattling off what the cigar is made up of. Now, You're just noticing. You're just this. noticing that. <laughs> I didn't hear anybody else say it. Well, we, there's lots of things just we don't say. It, yeah. Well, thank God. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, Tim, this is how's a it high, been? We have been all week. Wrapper, isn't it? I'm sorry. This is a high priming wrapper. This is a high priming wrapper. Correct. The wrapper is a uh, Ecuadorian, excuse me, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper uh, that we put on the cigar. This cigar was actually the number three cigar of the year in 2012. Um, right. The Pyramente was correct. Yeah. Um, as Tia stated, it comes in uh, four sizes at Cigar Cigars. And please don't forget the specials are running for the month of August. Buy four, get one free at all your Cigar Cigar 10 locations. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about the cigar. This cigar was probably one or one, one of the first cigars that we did with the group of the Maestros, which is our group, select group, um, you know, coming out of the factory. They have a plethora of, you know, knowledge, plethora. talent. Plethora. That's my word. <laughs> That's but right. um, but a great knowledge, a uh, great great amount of knowledge, expertise, and skill, and experience. You know, and the four or five guys that are, excuse me, five or six guys that uh, come together from different aspects of the company. You know, manufacturing as far as boxes, tobacco handling, um, blending. You know, they meet. You know, about twice, usually two to three times a month to review all the cigars, even new ones that they're working on, and old ones that to keep the blends consistent. You know, that makes the group of the Maestros and Altus one of the leading cigar manufacturers in the world, let alone the United States. We should start one of those here. Group of the Maestro? Yeah. Oh, um, we uh, already have the group uh, of the Bozos, and they meet, <laughs> <laughs> they meet every Tuesday right? morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, and then our poor people at home have to witness it Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But, but let me explain to you a little bit the concept behind, uh, you know, a lot of people when this came out, Art, and I remember you were one of them, why the package change? Yeah. Well, one of the uh, things we wanted to do was to modernize a great love story, you know, into a modern brand. So we came out with, Rome, uh, some people pronounce it Romeo. But this is a strictly a brick and mortar item. Right. Anything that bears the Romeo name is strictly your brick and mortar. As you know, we recently released the Romeo and Yeho, which has a uh, Connecticut broadleaf wrapper from our farm. And also recently we just did a collaboration with Rafael Nadal of Aging Room right. for Romeo, Romeo, by, Romeo by Romeo Aging Room. Small bit, small batch, excuse me. Good cigar, too. Very good cigar, yes. Very good cigar. So we're hoping, you know, with this being number three, and he had the number two cigar, the Romeo by Romeo Aging Room should be number one. There you go. Uh, there you go. Always optimistic. Always optimistic. In this business, that's a good attitude. Well, uh... Paul, you have anything to say? Yeah. Since you're further down on the cigar than any of us. <laughs> yeah, Paul's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> this cigar is a flavor bomb. I don't know any other way to say it. 
And normally you wouldn't think of a cigar with a Dominican filler and binder being this rich, but the combination of the Ecuadorian Habano wrapper uh, and those fillers in the binder just just blast flavor from the first puff. I think when most people smoked this originally when we launched this in 2012, um, they were you know pleasantly surprised because most people think of Romeo, and I know we reviewed one of the Romeos in the previous shows, was Romeo Real. It's a nice, mild, creamy cigar, and even the Romeo 1875 is a more middle-of-the-road. Yeah. I think this one, you know, up the ante as far as on flavor and taste, you know, of, of expanding the Romeo line, and that was something we were looking to capture. This is not your father's Romeo e. Julieta, that's not. for sure. And I think, uh, for my money, you, did, you guys did a great job not just upping the blend, but really making the whole attitude of the cigar much more contemporary. True. Um, I mean, we try to listen to, um, you know, the consumer. Wow. And the consumers have been telling us, you know, again, mild cigars are still the leading sellers, but we tried to branch off a little bit and to capture some other markets, you know, as far as some of the product that we've been producing. Uh, and this is one of them in the last four or five years. Home run. Tim, how do you get, before we go around the panel, how do you get your feedback from consumers? Well, if you look on our website, which is uh, MonteCristoSocialClub.com, we um, try to interact by, by doing events, getting feedback from our retailers, uh, getting feedback from consumers. You know, we try to put together what we think that the majority of the consumers want. You know, I mean, of course, you have your minorities and some aspects of wanting to smoke maybe stronger, milder, or lighter, whatever you want to call it. But we're trying to produce cigars that or more in the realm that everybody can smoke every day. So that's something that we're looking to do. Scott? Very earthy and leathery. Uh, that's what I'm getting right up front. Okay, it's an initial. <laughs> <laughs> what are you copying, Rob, now? Rob. Three words I, and out? Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with Scott. How's that? Yeah. Uh, it's, Not enough. It's, it's also got a very sweet tobacco -y taste. I get that. I, yeah, I, well, I, I think get that. that's where the cocoa is. It's, it's I, but I don't get a cocoa taste from it, though. I get a very distinct tobacco taste that's very sweet. Very true. Tastes like oh. a cigar. Tastes like a that? cigar should taste like. Almost like a syrupy tobacco taste. Really? Yeah. Tea? I get all the flavor profile, which is the nutty. I'm getting um, the earth. And then it's like a bitter chocolate underneath there somewhere. This is actually my favorite Romeo. Is it really? Mm -hmm. oh. Yep, my favorite. I thought the Reserve Real was. <laughs> <laughs> my least favorite. Huh. I think what's interesting about this again, this is um, you know a profile of more of a smoker that's more seasoned. You know, um, again, the Real is you know will put you into a certain realm. I think this kind of takes you up two or three steps, you know, past the Real, which is uh, what the market is requesting. So I think again, you know, when we put this out. You know, we were looking to hit a certain target market, but not, you know, completely change the Romeo family, but add something to a great love story that's already been in existence forever. Well, where'd you guys put the strength of this? This is medium. This is I true give it medium. medium full. I think this and is a true medium. I like it. Having, uh, having smoked this before, it's going to get fuller body. Correct. As, yes. as you get into the cigar. So. Well, yeah, I'm, I can feel it right now. Yeah. So. For my money, this is a very complex, considering how little I've smoked of it, even this much in. I'm tasting the complexities of the different tastes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, in talking about the group of the Maestros earlier, I think that that's what they were looking for in something like this. You know, I know you guys recently had the uh, group of the Maestros small batch yeah, that, you know, most people had. Wish we had um, <laughs> you know, again, if you smoke that cigar, you, you taste the different aspects of what they like to smoke. And I think when smoking this, I think you, you know, it's not the same cigar, but you kind of mirror what they're trying to accomplish. You know, they're trying to accomplish something see to grab more in depth. Like when you smoke a Real, it's very smooth, you know, very subtle. When you smoke this, the more you get into it, it's more, you know, in depth as you go inch by inch. You know, the, the more you go in, the better it gets. I don't know if you heard me, but I, I said, I wish we had more. I heard what you said. The group of the Just <laughs> well, in case. The group of the Maestro is all right. I wish I could Just sell you more. Just in case. In the corner of the warehouse somewhere, they discover 50 or 100 boxes laying around. Ah, uh, it's in like 10 you, years they will. You, you, <laughs> and, uh, you and the other uh, people that bought the other 250 boxes would like the group of the Maestro's Yeah, there was only how many, how many of those? 250 boxes, yes. Why do we buy them all? Uh, I don't think they let us. bought a lot of them. They did buy them. 
They were hundred in the box, mm -hmm. weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was hundred cigars in the box. Yeah. Yes, two hundred fifty thousand cigars. Well, I know you guys are one of the very few people that have, are privileged to have a, uh, a Monte Cristo lounge. Some of the cigars that yeah. the group of the maestros have made, you guys sell at your Monte Cristo lounge at Fraser, right. right? Which are exclusive to that, you know, location. So I mean, if you're looking to try something that's similar to that, you know, you guys sell the connoisseur kind of selections, right. and then you also have the uh, exclusive exclusive Monte Cristo cigars at your Fraser lounge that are in the same realm or made right. produced by the same group of people. Okay, so, twenty five thousand. Yeah, twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Correct. Twenty five thousand. We even considering the entire country. Wow, we did well getting what we got. Yes, you did. And yeah. I probably smoked four or five thousand of them myself. Because <laughs> yeah. I love that. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. I have your bill here. <laughs> yeah, it's a great cigar. It really was. I will tell you, you know, if uh, something very interesting that they also the group of the Maestros recently released is called Trinidad Lost Blends. Yeah. Um, that's another, I think, uh, winner. It's um. A little bit more uh, different, you know, but it's a little bit more uh, plentiful as far as number of cigars. So at the same time, I think you know your customers and yourselves will be satisfied with that also. And what's the What's the blend on that? I believe the blend on that is a uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, um, Dominican filler, and I think um, a little bit of Nicaraguan. I, don't quote me on that, but um, it's a very unique tasting cigar. Hmm. So what's the price point going to be? Price point on the Trinidad is probably roughly about nine to ten. Roughly eight fifty to nine, ten. Cool. We won't quote you. Well, thirty-five thousand people just heard you. Thirty-five thousand people just heard you say. Well, you know what? Eyeballs. They'll quote you. From when I first started with you guys last year, it was like nineteen thousand. Oh yeah, and, keep and, growing. And to keep growing to thirty-five thousand, that's fantastic. And that's just the people watching us live on Tuesday night. Correct. There's tens of thousands more that see it on YouTube, all over the world. We yeah. get requests. We get you know all kinds of nice, nice responses. Yeah. And of course, on our website at cccigars.com. That's double C cigars.com. Wow. Beautiful. Well, I was in a local shop in Florida, and a guy found out that I was from Pennsylvania. And he stated, he says, Hey, do you know the guys on that TV show? And I said, Very well. I'll tell you a better one. <laughs> Very well. I'll tell you another one. Sure. A, 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 uh, the owner of a brand that bears his name, I won't get into it, mm -hmm. uh, his check distributor in Prague. He went into him on a recent visit to Europe, and he goes in there and he, he said, I saw you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Those are the type of stories that you like to hear. And I know yeah. I know you guys, you know, work very hard in pushing all the brands and representing the brick-and-mortar, you know, customers throughout right. the United States. So, you know, that's a great thing that people are recognizing you all over the world. Fantastic. Yeah, they, they do know who we are. It's catching on. We should do a tour. <laughs> Start at Prague. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 all across the country. Prague would be a good place to start, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. It's a nice place. You're still in Cuba. Oh, that's even a better. Well, yeah, they're two different places. Believe me. They're, yeah, one well, yeah. I want to go to, one I don't. The cigar time tour. Let's so which one do you not want to go? Cigar time tour. Prague. Why not? Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll run a school bus and go around the country. <laughs> kind of like the Partridge Family bus. And just nice. <laughs> Well, well, and and no, which of no, us no, gets no, no, to no. be, uh, what's his name, the obnoxious little kid? Danny Bonaduce? Scott. Well, obviously me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do for you if you guys decide to get a bus. We have Romeo license plates, the same color as Bob. We'll give you the Romeo license plates. Cool. <laughs> wow, I'm very generous. Will you pay the licensing fees? Yeah, we'll pay hey, the licensing hey, fees for you, of we course. Wait, just for that. I think we're licensed in every state, so we may be able to be able to get you through. The rest of the <laughs> I'm smoking this thing pretty fast. Oh, you're pulling a pull. Yeah. Has anyone noticed the flavor changing as I had stated before, though? You noticed like... I said the complexity. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's definitely getting fuller body, like right. I said earlier. Yeah, it's, it's getting... I just, there's, I just, there's some nicotine in this. Yeah, there is. You think? Yeah. Just a scotch. Miss Tia, how are you feeling about it? This is my favorite. Out of the entire line, it's my favorite. It's very complex. It burns great. Um, it just... It just tastes wonderful. That's a nice taste to it. Well, I know if you like it, I know I can go to sleep tonight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Your life is complete now. Life is complete. It's on a whole other scale. From the Paul, can you uh, ruminate on any interesting subjects? 
any East Indian iguanas to tell us about? Or? No, no, I have no, no iguanas to talk about today. No freehold fish? <laughs> freehold <laughs> fish? Freehold fish with three heads? No. <laughs> no. Huh? Those right. are <laughs> those are all out by Three Mile Island. Mm -hmm. Three-headed mm -hmm. fish. Tim, just in case you were wondering, I have some Phillies playoff tickets real cheap I could have. Oh, <laughs> good, good. But it's interesting you mentioned iguanas, though, because I know you guys had Larry Palumbo on here, who was one of my coworkers. Yeah. And Larry has like a big iguana at his house. Oh, really? It, yeah, his name is Iggy. Yeah. Iggy. Yeah, like about six feet. Yeah. It's like a pet. It's, it was a, it's his son's iguana, but Larry cool. Larry takes care of it. Yeah. Nice. Iggy's pretty cool when he wants to come out. But uh, yeah, interesting. Have you eaten iguana? Um, no, I've never had iguana, but I have had alligator and crocodile. There's uh, a I've had crocodile. There's a alligator. restaurant in Nicaragua hmm. that's about halfway between Managua and Esteli. And it's seven huts on the side of the road in the woods. And behind the seven huts is like an animal preserve. Wow. And you go out in the animal preserve and you pick an animal. And they have all kinds of animals running around in there. And you pick an animal and you tell them how they, you want them to cook it. I saw this in a movie. And you go, <laughs> you go sit in one of the huts and wait. And they Morgan bring it Brando. Yeah. Today's show is sponsored by PETA. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I saw this. I saw this in a movie with Marlon Brando. What's yeah. that? Martin, Matthew Broderick. Oh well, oh, no, yeah. no, it's nothing fancy freshman, like that. What was that animal? The, the, that uh, was a, a dragon, dragon of Komodo. The, Komodo yeah, dragon. dragon. Yeah, yeah. Paul, but, tell us because I, I we're some jealous, pe Paul. Some people have asked me over the years, uh -oh. and you can give them the technical reason. Oftentimes, even on the most expensive fine cigar, you'll see these little round, like, off color brown spots on there. They sometimes call that kissed by the sun. Yep, exactly. And really, it's, it's neither a defect nor something special. It's just kind of uh, mystique. If water beads up on the leaf while it's out in the field and the sun hits it just so, the water droplet acts like a magnifying glass and just burns a little spot in the leaf. Actually, what about green spots? <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. You know, some cigars will have like a little... Yeah, a little streak. It's a, just, it's a plant. Yeah. It's going to have spots of, of all yeah. kinds of colors if you look like close that. enough. <laughs> like what? No, like, uh, I don't know. Like condescending? Yeah, like condescending to you. With, with I assume that's what with it good was, reason. but you know. And we haven't visited this subject in a very long time, but this, describe the difference between bloom or bloom, as most people call it, and mold. Well, since you bring that up, I'll tell you that this is probably, the cigar we're smoking right now is probably a great candidate for plume if you give yes, it enough exactly. time. Mold is obviously just what you think it is. It's, uh, mold? it's mold. Oh. It, it grows, it, if you're over-humidified, it can grow on your, on your cigar. Uh, it typically looks furry. Um, it's usually green, but it can be a lighter color, almost white. Plume, on the other hand, is an entire... it doesn't come off. It doesn't no, come off. because it's actually growing on, the, on yeah, the tobacco. Right, right. It's got roots. Um, plume is a whole different animal. Basically, since all of the flavor in a cigar comes from oils that occur naturally in the leaf, when the conditions are exactly right in your humidor and the cigar is ready to do this, the oils begin to crystallize on the surface of the cigar. And what you'll see, it might at a glance look like mold, but if you look more carefully, it's very sparkly and it's actually little, like tiny salt crystals right on the surface. And in all of the time that that cigar is going to exist on this planet, there is never a better time yeah. to smoke it than when that plume emerges on the cigar. Don't you get crystallization though when some people put baby oil on the cigars? Well, you get something, but I don't think you That was that's an inside joke. That's, an inside, <laughs> that's a trade secret that, that we should only mention that Putting anything other than tobacco on your tobacco yeah, you is know. never a good idea. Yeah, very true. For your mouth. And, and certain certain shades of wrapper are more apt to plume than others. Well, the, the the more oil there is, yeah. the more likely it is to, if you age it enough, 
the more likely it is to form. Pests. And plume, you can brush that off. Yeah, it comes right off. The mold, the mold you can't. Obviously. Yeah, but you don't want it. You don't want to brush. No, you it want off. to smoke with the crystals there. I understand that. You don't I'm want to take a scrubbing saying. brush and. Right. You know. Now, I I might have told you this story, Rob, but I used to when when I was selling cigars, I had a, a national sales manager. Who, Victor Charlie. Yes, Victor Charlie. <laughs> I love that name. Victor that is a cool name. And uh, I, he was out in uh, um, Nebraska, and I met him out in Nebraska to call on customers. And as soon as I walked off the plane at, at the airport, the first words out of his mouth were, I have a whole shipment of your cigars, and the retailers want to give it back. <laughs> and I said, well, why? Show me. And he opened the trunk of his car, and he probably had two or three hundred boxes of cigars in his trunk. And he opens up a box, and he says, there's this weird white crap all over them. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you call yourself a cigar salesman, and you think that's weird white crap? I told him, I'll, I'll tell you what. Any retailer who doesn't know what that is and wants to give it back, <laughs> I will gleefully take them back and either sell them to somebody who knows what plume is, or I'll smoke them myself, because they don't get better than that. That's very true. Yeah. All right. I, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say, oh, years ago, you probably remember that. Some people still may do it, but certain some retailers would actually charge more money for cigars than that. Cigar. Cigar. Really? Oh, yeah. I used to do it yeah. just the opposite. When I was a kid, there was a wholesale retailer in downtown Philadelphia. Okay. And I would wait till I got somebody young behind the counter. Of course, I was about 16, 17 myself. I would go in there and say... I get a handful of the pluming cigars, and I go, "Can I buy these?" And they were like seventy-five and a dollar, right. mostly Cubans yes. actually. And I'd say, "These cigars are, have mold all over them, but I'll, I'll I'll give you half price for them." And I'd get away with it about half the time. So this is free embargo then. Oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. gotcha. They were allowed to sell in 1962 when the embargo went into effect. They were allowed to sell off their remaining stocks, and many retailers Correct. had them for years, because in those days the Cuban cigar wasn't a big deal. I mean, right. that was the cigar. There weren't that many domestic yeah. cigars. Correct. Scott, we need to start the reviews. Okay. Um, I'm getting the the earth, uh, very leathery. It, it is a medium to full bodied cigar, um, and I'm getting that a little bit of that metallic flavor from it. I don't find it as I don't find it as complex as everybody else does. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It just I, I've had this cigar before, and I, I have I recognize how good it can be, but this one just isn't. It could be all those hot peppers and ghost peppers you had for lunch may have numbed your tongue. <laughs> yeah, could be. Paul? Uh, I think the cigar is finishing out the way it started, which is medium to full-bodied, lots of cocoa and earthy, leathery flavors, nothing metallic in my book, and a really nice nicotine hit. If you want a, a comfortable buzz off a cigar, this is a really good choice. <laughs> good choice of words. Rob? I agree, except for everything except the um, the cocoa taste. I don't get that at all. But there's a lot of nicotine in this cigar, believe me. It's really spinning my head. So, <laughs> it, yeah, uh, your, your eyes are kind of crazy. My eyes are all over the place, yeah. But, uh, this is, this is a, it's a nice cigar, it really is. If, you, if you're looking for a very tobacco-y tasting cigar, this is it. Gee? Well, like I said, this is my favorite out of the Romeo line. I think it's a true medium. Um, it's just so dang tasty. It's just really tasty. I mean, it has all the flavors that it says. It's complex. Um, it the draw is great. Um, look at the ash. It's just gorgeous. Look at that. So it's my favorite. This is actually gorgeous my girl favorite. ash. Yeah. Well, we call it long ash online. That's right. Long That's ash. Right, long ash. As for me, I get a little of the metallic taste you're talking about. I also get a bit of a sweet nutty taste to it. I mean, this is what the wonderful well, thing about smoking is. Like it's so subjective. I mean, very much. Yeah, yeah, very much subjective. And I find this I find it more medium than medium full. Yeah, medium. And I'm sensitive to more full body cigars. I don't I don't I find this more middle of the road when it comes to strength. And it has a lot of taste. And the taste has evolved as we've gone through the cigar. Okay. Well I always thought that the motto for this particular cigar should have been Let's bring love to you. And what I mean by that is the flavor is coming to you with yeah. the strength, yeah, yeah. you know, and um, that's, I think, one of the things that the group of the maestros were trying to capture, you know, when they, when they made the cigar. I find your company really puts a lot of people 
in, to get involved in, 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 in the public perception of how the cigars are done. In other words, your group of the maestros and, and other people in your company like Larry have, have a big public presence. Correct. Consumers know who these people are and they know the brands that they stand in front of. Well, I think that's I think that's good to know. I mean, there are some people yeah. that are you know ver you know different size companies where um, you know they're a face. You know, right. Um, right. we're we're more of a group. You know, you know, you know, not one individual per se. A very large you know, company. Very large company, right? What a number of uh, just a reminder: we're rev reviewing the Romeo by Romeo. For those of you who didn't tune in at the very beginning, um, I would give this an eight point five. Wow. Okay, Paul. Nine two five. Rob. Uh, eight two five. Jeez. G. Nine point seven five. Wow! Oh, wow! Yeah. She likes it. it I give it. it. I give it nine and a quarter. So it's a little above nine, which is fantastic. What's the price points on this cigar? Eight. I think it's a, for buses like eight dollars. I was saying price high. point in Pennsylvania is roughly between seven seventy five and nine dollars. Okay, so it's, it's right in there with what cigars cost nowadays. And it's a great smoke. It is a good smoke. It is, a good it smoke. is nice. Even Tilo's. Right. And don't forget about the specials at Cigar yeah. Cigars. Ah. Four, four and one. Tips it. Oh, okay. Let's All month long, four and one. Anything from Alphabus. We're off China. This is going to be really cool. Alphabus. I've been Alphabus. waiting for, <laughs> I've actually been waiting to do a special on Altatus, so this is going to be great. We hope you can sell all the real you got. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Let's sell out of it. She just wants to get it out of the store so she doesn't have to smoke it. That's what it is. As, as we approach our second anniversary, I just want to, before we sign off, I just want to thank everybody for your viewership, uh, for your patronage of our stores and all the other brick and mortar stores that service you, especially in the wintertime when there's a few places to smoke. And sadly, with the laws the way they are going, there's fewer and fewer places to smoke. So it's time to say goodnight, everybody. Goodnight, everybody. My mom. Life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. What do you think about it? Smoke often and do smoke happy. Smoke for now. Bye-bye. Ciao for now, everybody. Smoke. Well, on behalf of our old buddy Tim Person here, <laughs> I just want to say thank you, and we'll see you next week, and stay tuned for Blend of Bye-bye. Thank you for having us. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America, a grassroots movement designed to protect your ability to enjoy premium handmade cigars. Cigar smokers have never really been asked to be engaged in the political process before, but now with the passage of smoking bans and taxation and regulation at the local level, the state capital level, and now in the halls of Congress and with a bureaucracy out of control in Washington, D.C., the time is essential that you become a part of this process. Filling out petitions, getting consumers to fill out and be a part of an electoral process to change elections, letting politicians know how you feel about protecting your ability to enjoy great premium handmade cigars. That's what Cigar Rights of America is all about. Go to CigarRights.org. Fill out a petition to your member of Congress or to your state legislator. Tell them you're going to remember those votes on election day. Let's send a bureaucracy a loud and clear message that we're not going to take this laying down. Be a part of it. CigarRights.org.